Mosaic, a daily news program from Link TV, presents a selection of news reports from independent and state-controlled broadcasters from throughout the Middle East. A huge earthquake measuring 8.7 on the Richter scale struck in the sea off the coast of Sumatra, 880 miles northwest of the Indonesian capital, Jakarta. Early reports said dozens of people were killed and massive destruction has been caused by the huge quake, which hit close to where a similar one in December triggered a tsunami that left nearly 300,000 people dead or missing across Asia. Tens of thousands of people ran out of their homes in many parts of Sumatra, as well as in Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia and India, heading for higher ground. In the Indonesian island of Nias, buildings have been damaged, people were in panic, while some were reported to be trapped. Police on Nias Island predict that 75% of the main town was damaged by the quake. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center warned that the quake could generate widely destructive tsunamis and called on people to evacuate from coastlines within 1,000 kilometers of the epicenter. An official at the center believed the quake was likely to force tsunami waves to the south towards Mauritius. Officials believe this is an aftershock from the December 26 quake of 9.3 magnitude. Malaysia, Thailand, India and Sri Lanka immediately issued tsunami warnings in coastal areas. Palestinian officials expressed dissatisfaction with Israel's decision to delay the handover of a third West Bank city to Palestinian control. The handover of Qalqilia, due this week, was called off by Israeli Defense Minister Shaul Mofaz yesterday. Mofaz claimed the delay was because Palestinians had not seized weapons, as promised, in the towns of Jericho and Tul Kerem, already under Palestinian control. Palestinian officials urged Israel not to delay handovers, while Palestinian Prime Minister Ahmad Qreya called the withdrawal promise from Israel meaningless. Uh, I advise uh, General uh, Mufaz to retreat. He must uh, support Abu Mazen, especially when Abu Mazen in the first days in his... I, w I, w I will not say impossible mission, but hard and complex mission. Meanwhile, Israeli forces raided the West Bank town of Jenin, arresting eight people for allegedly being involved in making crude rockets and mortars for attacks against Israeli towns. An Israeli soldier was wounded by an explosive device during the operation. Jenin is another West Bank town Israel is due to hand over to Palestinian security control, but has not yet said when it would transfer control of it. In the latest violence in Iraq, a car bomber killed seven people and wounded nine near a crowd of Shiite pilgrims traveling south of Baghdad to an annual religious ceremony. Uh, that uh, uh, the ceremony officials fear would draw attacks. Police in, in Iskandaria, south of Baghdad, said the bomber struck on a road leading towards Karbala, a sacred Shiite city where this week hundreds of thousands of pilgrims will mark an annual mourning ceremony. Iraqi police have strengthened security in and around Karbala over the past week, fearing attacks in the build-up to the ceremony. In apparently related violence, a bicycle strapped with explosives blew up near a police car on the main road from Baghdad to Karbala, killing two policemen and wounding several other police and civilians. In the Dura district of southwestern Baghdad, a police chief was gunned down by unknown assailants as he's drove to work. Colonel Abdel Karim Al Amiri's driver was also killed in the attack. And in Najaf, south of Karbala, police Major Noor Karim Noor was shot dead by U.S. troops after approaching a checkpoint on the wrong side of the road. The U.S. military had no immediate information on the incident. In Takrit, police sources said that insurgents attacked a police station but caused no casualties. And in Fallujah, the Iraqi interim government paid residents of the city